go before him, Heavenly Father, God, you are so good. Lord, you are good. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your goodness. The joy you bring, the peace you give. Truly amazing. What an amazing God you are. Jesus, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for life in you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you've given to us to lead us in worship, lead us in truth, empower us to witness. Father, we give you this time. It is yours. You've entrusted it to us. We bring you our very best. In Jesus' name, amen.
This morning, if you have a prayer request or prayer, need prayer, or know somebody who needs prayer, um, I would encourage you to come forward. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's that step of faith that we need to, to ignite that, that spark of faith in our lives, right? So I'd encourage you to come. People will pray with you right here.
steadfast and true. We thank you again and again for Jesus, that in him we have life, that Jesus lives, and because he lives, we live also. We praise and thank you for that. Lord, for the heart that is here this morning, hearing these, the words of these songs, may it penetrate into their spirit. Lord, if they do not know you, may it break down that veil, break down that wall. Lord, for the words that will be spoken uh, in a little bit, Father God, may, it, may they also add to it. But for the heart of the individual that doesn't know you, that they would come to know you in these moments. To glorify you, to honor you. To step into your, to the, to the body that you have placed together. Your church, your bride. So greatly loved. Lord, we love you. We love you and we praise you. You are beautiful and good. We thank you for your spirit leading and guiding you. Praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us greet one another.
church. Thanks for everybody for coming out. Glad you made it out because we have a big day today. I feel like we can always say that. That was a big day here. First of all, did you see in the back when you came in all of that stuff on the table back there? All that big stuff? Very, uh, looks very good. Missionettes, big sales. So I didn't get the details on that. I'm assuming after church as well. Available. Kentucky can disaster relief, so all of that funds uh, money is going for that as well. So uh, make sure you check out that. And then uh, right after morning service, is Phil here? I saw Phil. Of course he's here. After church, potluck. He left. I bet I know where he is. <laughs> I just have to check on him. Okay, right after morning service, we do have uh, potluck uh, up there as well as you probably are aware of. Uh, and then this afternoon, very important, we have our annual business meeting starting at 12.30. So uh, all are welcome to that. Obviously, it is for uh, the members of the casino here. Uh, but you do not need to be a member to attend. If you are not a registered, bona fide member, that is okay. You can still attend the meeting, and you are welcome to uh, do that as well. So just want to make you aware of that. Nobody is excluded uh, if you think you can't be a part of it. So uh, please join us for that if you can. Um, so then this evening, we have a regular uh, evening service, 7 p.m., the Gospel Marketplace series uh, continues on. Uh, a regular slate of events coming up uh, Tuesday, the Women's Bible Study at the Horns, Wednesday, uh, release time uh, is now uh, in swing. Uh, that is at the Baptist Church for the school. Um, kids are able to go over there, uh, make yourself part of that if you're able to, or uh, your kids are part of the school. Doing that. Uh, Wednesday night, then, of course, our regular activities, something for everybody. I see a bunch of youth stuff in here. Chris, we go to a speed of light tour coming up. I remember winter is always a busy time. The winter retreat in February, all those details. Uh, make sure if uh, that involves you get with Chris um, what you need there for that information. Um, Sunday school loyalty campaign, if you're not aware of that, that has begun as well for your kids going to camp. Great way to earn. Uh, money and hopefully maybe create a good habit. I got my kids this morning asking for offering. We have offering, we have offering. So um, it's a great program. Helps out uh, you as parents and then uh, great for the kids as well. So anything else? Um, Sunday school. So uh, you did see your bulletin. That is me. I get more nervous than the announcements. So yes, I will be speaking tonight. Uh, if you're able to make it up for that, so that would be great. Sorry, this is out of the out of the norm here. I'm just gonna jump up, take the mic, but I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to our winter retreat coming up, new event that we're we've been planning. So, uh, if you're interested, if you have youth age kids or you know of youth age kids that want to get a great experience, two nights stay at Trout Lake Campground. Uh, we are in the works of getting it. We have a speaker, we have a worship team coming in, so. Um, really excited about it, but just want to let everybody know here on Sunday morning, if you do have any kids that don't make it on Wednesday nights, or you have grandkids or whatever, that want, you maybe want to send them on it, it's, uh, it'll be very fun. I've always loved winter retreats when I've been on them, so that's why I've tried to get one started to make it happen. So, just wanted to give a, a kind of a plug, and uh, I'm a little bit, because it's my first time doing it, I'm a little bit late on getting everything finalized and ready to go, but it is ready to go and finalized now. So. If you want a form or if you need help filling it out or you want to come talk to me about it, I would love to share some more details or give you a form to fill out and, and have your kid go. So thank you. All right. We will be starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, you know, as we go through the, uh, the week, I... Typically, I'll listen to, to um, talk radio, but for Saturday morning, uh, and then I, well, then it's Christian talk radio, but it's the um, public, public square out of Ohio, uh, then John Stone, Stone Street, and uh, Marie Bear on, uh, oh, what is it called? Chuck Colson's thing. Great point. Thank you. Whoever said that. Um, Great point, and then Jan Markell. Uh, and after listening to them, 
Uh, after each program, I feel like I need to change my sermon. You know, man, this is really important. This needs to be talked about. This needs to be addressed. Then I listen to Stone Street. Oh, no, I need this is what it is. Um, but I feel the greatest confidence in, in just going through God's scripture. Verse by verse, passage by passage. Because uh, every topic is going to be discussed. Uh, and, and I was, I was sent uh, uh, one about um, the, the concern for pastors having to be careful about how they speak on sexual issues, homosexual issues, transgender issues, uh, those types of things. And, uh, and, I, and I watched it, listened to it, um, and it's taking place in Canada right now. Uh, but they also shared that it was in Indiana, they are, they're starting some legislation, if it isn't already accomplished, that um, it, it says that there can be no uh, 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 changing one person out of homosexuality or changing from Terrence Jetcher back into <coughs> heterosexuality, back into the sex that they were born, okay? And <coughs> So that language is being placed in there, not so much as a religious statement, but as a, a counselor um, uh, uh, type thing, a psychological type conversation. But, it, but it, the, the concern is that it slips into the Christian. Because we, we preach that God created male and female, right? We preach that it is the healthiest law uh, uh, of, of relationship, the healthiest relationship, number one, is with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the healthiest of all relationships. But when God created man and woman, He said, now go multiply. Means go procreate. Go make babies. Okay? And so when God established Adam and Eve, He established that institution of marriage, one man, one woman, for a lifetime, bringing about children. Okay? That's what, that's the idea. That's the perfect setting. That's what we preach. Now I get it. Lives are broken. I'm a broken person. So I, I, I speak as one who understands. Okay? So if, if, if life is, is completely full of broken people, there's going to be relationships that struggle and will be broken. Okay? I get it. But I am, uh, it may sound like I'm on a soapbox right now. I will get to first grade. But I just, and, and it, 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 it fires me up. Oh, I was so tempted to launch on this. I was, you weren't. <laughs> um, I was so tempted, but I don't, I could, I could be chasing so many different rabbit holes every week where I know when we stick to God's word, it's going to address those issues in a timely fashion for us. Amen. Okay? And so, so I, I, I've taken 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I have not preached this since, or gone through this since 2008 or so. Why do I know this? Because when I got to huh, chapter 5, it talks about immorality in the church. In the church. <laughs> I remember I was laying into it, you know, or, you know, I wasn't coming across, you know, fire and brimstone, at least I don't think it was. Maybe I was trying to. But I was, I was preaching on it, and, and, and I, I know I was getting it right. You know, God meant for sex to be sacred, sexuality to be sacred, humanity is sacred, life is sacred. It is uh, the Sanctity of Life Month, I think, uh, this week or next week is the Sanctity of Life Week. Uh, but the point of the matter is, is life is sacred, humanity is sacred, you are sacred. You are sacred unto God, you are valuable unto God, I am valuable unto God. And so I'm preaching this. And within three days, I hear, I get, uh, I gain knowledge in my family, uh, extended family, of the issue of homosexuality. 
that somebody is, they're going after, okay? Or they want to live that alternate lifestyle, okay? It's, it, it doesn't matter how we paint it, it's wrong. So I'm, you know, I get this, I'm like, are you kidding me? <coughs> now I, I will tell you this, um, in my initial conversation with that relative of mine, I brought the truth and I laid it on beautifully, I think. But it's been about eight to ten year process of getting that relationship back. I was right with what I said. I was terrible on how I said it, okay? I was terrible on how I said it. But I was unwavering on the truth and I, I, I I have no intention to do that. Every month I sit uh, with five men that hold me accountable. Every week I stand before people that hold me accountable. Am I preaching God's truth? And I stand on that. That's what we're going to preach here. It, it doesn't matter what laws they make. God's law is higher than that. God's uh, scripture is higher than that. And that's what we'll preach here. So, yes, uh, someday, uh, maybe soon, maybe in five weeks when we get to chapter five, <laughs> at your rate, ten weeks. Um, <laughs> but, um, and, and so having said all that, we as believers, you as believers, I as a believer, we need to know what God's word is saying, but we can't live with our head stuck in the sand. We live in a world that needs the truth. We live in a world where people need to know that they are loved while we are telling them the truth. We need to know what's going on. If, if, if you want to run for a political office, run. We will cover you in prayer. We will bathe you in prayer. Go for it. That is a sacred thing to do. If you want to drive a truck, that is a sacred thing to do. If you want to build homes, that's a sacred thing to do. There's nothing that is, that is meant to be separated from God. Everything we do is meant to be a glory unto God. We do it unto God and bring Him honor and praise. But we as believers, we as a, a, a people walking in this world, we need to know what's going on in this world. How to communicate to those that are lost. We need in love. Amen, amen. But we also need to we, we, have, we need to be informed. We need to be knowledgeable about what's going on and how the scriptures apply to it. So, having said that, thank you. I'll step off the soapbox and we'll pray again. Father, we praise you for your word. You are good and mighty God. I thank you. I thank you for this letter that's been written, uh, not just to the Corinthian church, but to each one of us. And as we look at this, we can, we can see your calling for, for people to come to know you through your son, Jesus Christ. We can see through this your calling uh, people to, to higher standard, to a, a, a glorious and more abundant way of living. Father, we, we humble ourselves before your scriptures and, and before your spirit uh, here in this place and in each one of us. To lead us and guide us to that truth. Again, for the one that doesn't know you, that they're, they're their heart would cry out to you. To call you into their life. To confess their sin. To say, I need a Savior. I need forgiveness. Jesus, you are. You are that Savior. You offer that forgiveness. Restoration. And reconciliation unto our Heavenly Father. We look at your word. And we, Lord, I thank you that it's alive. And sharp. Jesus' name, amen. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes and our, and our brother, or excuse me, our brother, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. Uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, just I enjoy the way Paul starts off his letters. Uh, when I write letters, I try to do the same. 
because I know I just think there's a romantic thing about it, but it, it's beautiful. It's uh, how many here have received a text by an unknown number? Yeah. How many of you have answered or looked at that text? No. Oh, why not? It's unknown. So. Uh, when I'm asked to text somebody that I don't know and they don't know me, I will text, because you usually can see on that little clip right down there, you got a text from whatever number. It, it, and so my first sentence is, Daniel Johnson of Casino Assembly of God, here, wanting to talk to you. So now they, they can put a name to the number that's coming. And then they'll the hope, I, I trust that they click on it, say, and, and I typically tell them I'll be calling you in an hour or so. Just FYI, this is the number of that time. Okay? And, 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 you know, Paul was doing that to the church. I, I think the church knew Paul. I think the church knew Paul. But it's, but it's a beautiful way, and, I, and I've grown more and more uh, just fond of it, if I can say it that way. But in that verse 2, point number one is, we're called to be saints. He's talking to the Corinthian church. He's talking to the believers then. But he's talking to us now. We are called to be saints. How many of you want to walk around and say, I'm a saint of God? Why don't we want to use that word? I'll tell you why. Because it bears responsibility. It bears a... I not living up to what that name is calling me to be. You want to know something? You'll never be a saint without Jesus. In Jesus Christ, you are a saint. You're called. What is, what is sainthood? It's, it's the sanctification of you. Jesus is sanctifying of you. Sanctifying is a $20,000 word, meaning set apart. You've been set apart for the glory of God. You've been set apart for the purpose of God. You are a saint. Set apart. Sanctified for the glory of God. It is Paul's calling to the Corinthian church. It is Paul's calling to us. It is God's calling to us. And I forget uh, where, where else it states it in Scripture, but I, 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 it says, Rise up, O man of God. Even now I get choked up about it. When another man looks the man in the eye and says, Rise up, O man of God. For me, it does something. It says in my heart, This guy thinks I'm a man. This man thinks that I'm of God. Rise up. Rise up. There's a calling to battle. There's a calling to... Uh, uh, to, to that distinction of being in Christ Jesus. And it's not just rise up, O man. It's rise up, O woman of God. I think it does something in every one of us, particularly when we speak it to one another face to face. When you... And, and, oh, sorry, Daryl. Um, I would challenge each and every one of us When you have an opportunity, opportunity to speak to somebody this week that is a follower of Jesus Christ, look him in the eye and say, if, if, if you're talking to me, look me in the eye and say, oh man of God, do the great things of him. And it doesn't have to be as cheesy as that. That's not cheesy, though. I'm telling you, for me and for most men, they're going to puff their chest out a little bit. It's going to blow air into them saying, I'm being called to be a man. For the glory of God. If you get a chance, uh, if you're married, look your wife in the eye and say, you are a beautiful woman of God. Rise up. For the Lord Christ. Those words breathe into people. Paul's breathing into the Corinthian church. Paul's breathing into our lives. He's saying, you are saints. Rise up, O church. Rise up and be counted. 
and it applies to all who call upon Jesus for salvation. <clears throat> Continuing on in verse 4, I thank, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come, that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay? From this, second point, we have been given spiritual gifts. And you might be thinking, well, you're talking about tongues and interpretations? Sure, you want me to talk about tongues and interpretations? It doesn't come until chapter 12 and 14. You want me to hit? Go ahead. But I'm talking spiritual gifts. There's a lot of spiritual gifts. There's a spiritual gift of hospitality, spiritual gift of administration, spiritual gift of teaching. Okay? And, and we can go through. God is gifting you for his glory. Now, point number one, you're called to be saints, right? He doesn't just leave it there. He doesn't say, I want you to be my saints. He says, I want you to be my saints. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit, I'm going to give you gifts. Now, it might be a one-time deal that you receive the gift of, of healing. You pray over somebody, and all of a sudden you see the ear that had been lost. All of a sudden, the ear reappears, and it's like, hmm, there's something to do with Okay? And, and that would be amazing to see, amen? amen? I would think so. Okay. It may be a, a, a gift of knowledge. Where, where you, you come into a group and there's an individual off to the side and the Spirit says, go say such and such to that person. You walk over and you say, um, I don't even know your name. My name is so and so. But I believe God wants you to know such and such. And they break down crying. You think you've offended them. You're like, okay, awkward. You're going to walk away. And they say, no. <laughs> Nobody else knows that about me. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Gift of knowledge. You know, a word of discernment. I better not do that. You shouldn't do that. I just, you know, I feel it in my spirit that we better not jump off this cliff. Okay? I mean, that's an obvious one. Okay? Fairly obvious. But a word of discernment for a group. To say, you know what? The road that appears that we're going down is not a good one for us to go down. And this is why possibly follow my scripture, possibly follow more information that God supernaturally gives to you. And the body listening says, they aren't that bright. That's of God. Right? But we've been called to be saints. And in that calm, God has promised to give us gifts. Not only do these gifts enrich what we are capable of doing in, in bringing God glory and in uh, relating to one another, but in these gifts, I believe it intensifies our anticipation of Jesus, what? Coming again. Returning for his trip. Returning and coming and establishing his kingdom on the earth. Not so much for the church. The church will be in heaven with him. But these spiritual gifts lead us to believe, you know what, these are real gifts, this is from a real God, therefore if God said uh, that Jesus will return, he's going to return. It should build our anticipation, it build, should build our confidence and assurance that, you know what, God said, it. it's going to be done. It's going to be done, that we can walk in there. God is faithful, that verse 9, God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of the Son. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you were called into this fellowship, into this union, into this joy, this relationship. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Down in verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. 
and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized in the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be uh, made of no effect. Now it's interesting. Early in the excuse me. Early in the letter, he's dealing with division. He's dealing with factions. He's dealing with uh, issues that cause the body to divide. So what is what is Paul saying? Shouldn't happen. That should not be happening. There should not be a division in the body of Christ. And as I as I thought about that. You know, he started listing off Paul and Apollos and Cephas. Um, you know, I... Yeah, that's a dangerous ground. Um, you know, I just, I just wonder how close we are to that with the um, Pentecostal four square um, independent Lutheran Baptist covenant Reformation you, do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I'm curious as to what Paul would say to that how do you deal with that? On YouTube, every once in a while, you get uh, a John MacArthur uh, coming against two or three other pastors, or you get Vadi Baca saying something that these other people are her heretical. They're, they're preaching heresy. Okay. I don't know if it's wise for us as a church to air out our dirty laundry. In my mind, I think it would have been better for, and again, compared to MacArthur or Buddy Bachman, I am nothing. Okay? They're great men of God. I, I, I think I'll leave both of them. And they're highly public. Okay? They're going to be asked the question. Sometimes I just feel like, you know, I think it would have been better. Let's say it were, it were me being uh, interviewed and asked. And I said something public. It would have been better for me to say, you know what? You know, I, I can't talk about that to you. I've yet to talk to so and so about that. I hear publicly what he's saying, but I don't, I'm not sure where he's at. In his understanding, deal with it individually. Deal with it individually. Within the church, you know, I mean, you take it down to the individual level. <coughs> if I'm in sin, okay, if I'm in sin, uh, Bradley comes and talks to me, says, Hey, Dan, you're in sin, you need to fix this. Uh, Brad, you know what you're talking about. Well, Brad brings with him two other witnesses. Hey, it's evident that this is what's going on. Uh, you guys don't know anything. Okay, what's the next process? Take it before you. A church, you know, Dan Johnson, he's been doing this, this and this. It's evident, the public knows this. It's wrong, it, he shouldn't do that. If at that point then I say, you know what, you're right, I ask your forgiveness, <coughs> and, and I need to make the corrections in my life, okay, that's the way it's done. Eventually, if I say ignore that, all right, then you boot me out. Okay? Then you boot me out. 
So there's there's a process that we go, but it, right now it just seems, you know, everybody's telling everybody else that they're so wrong and how they're preaching the gospel, but if I weren't a believer, why would I want to be? Who do I believe? Well, he believes the Holy Spirit. You believe the Holy Spirit brings conviction upon you. And may the Holy Spirit bring the conviction upon each and every one of us. If you're not a believer, may that conviction let you know that you're a sinner without the hope of salvation. But in Christ Jesus, you can have that. If you're a, a, a follower of God and there's conviction, well, pay attention to what that conviction is about. That's, that's part of the sanctifying process. That's part of, hey, we've got to clean up some of this cobweb stuff. We need to be vigilant not to divide. And um, I, think, I think it was just in Sunday school this morning. It doesn't take much for a church to get camp set up. It doesn't take much at all to get camp set up. I mean by that, divisions. On any topic. The question is, is can we figure out, okay, what is the, what is the foundation that we're, that we're both standing on? We're both standing on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, let's stay in unity with that then. Because these peripheral issues probably mean nothing. They probably mean nothing. You know, and you, you know, more sillier things is color of carpet or color of chairs or um, what songs we sing, what songs we don't sing. Okay. Do we preach Jesus? Yes. Do we sing about Jesus? Yes. When we sit in the wrong colored chair, do we still worship Jesus? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Church answer? Yes. Um, no, that's absolutely true. But Paul is talking about that. Even in the Corinthians, even at that early stage where the Spirit had been poured out. And it was evident. I mean, it's within a decade the Corinthian church is established. The pouring out of the Holy Spirit and, and, and Paul even uh, uh, declaring that when he prayed with people, they were filled with the Spirit. They spoke in tongues or they experienced this, this infilling of the Spirit to a, in a supernatural extent. That the presence was real. And even at that early age, what were they doing? Now, I'm with Paul. I'm with Peter. I'm with Apollos. And what is Paul saying? Paul's saying, Paulos, Peter, and uh, Paulos, Peter, and Paul are nothing. It's Christ Jesus. It's Christ Jesus. Um, I think I'm far enough out. Uh, when when we first came up here in 04, uh, worked under a beautiful man. I wish he was still alive. He passed away a year later. Brain cancer. Um, dearly loved man. I broke it. Uh, and so in that process, you know, in January of 05, um, this beautiful man of God dies. And so as a church, we just kind of, we lingered for about two and a half, three months. Just, okay, what, what direction do you want to go? And Praise the Lord, you went in this direction. Uh, Amen. <laughs> um, but um, I had two people, two people write me letters and say, Dan, you need to run. You need to leave. Why? Because I'm following a very good man of God. I witnessed it myself. He would have been a great teacher to me. Would have been. He would have slapped me up, but he would have set me straight. Kind, kind of guy I enjoy, you know. Not the physical abuse part, but. <laughs> but he would. He, I, I loved him. They said that was basic. That was one of them. He was a better guy. He was really good. People loved him there. Underline it. People loved him there. Then they said, and he died in an office. It's hard to follow that. And 
Okay. Lord. <coughs> and because it, it elevated him. Did John, John F. Kennedy, was he a great president or not? Had he lived, would he have been a great president? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Why? Died in office. It, it elevates. Okay? It also creates, could possibly have created some division. Well, he's not Broberg, therefore, I'm not a part of this. So did their faith die with that man? I don't think so. I think they've got better faith than that. But the point being is, is sometimes the church, this church, the, the present church, capital C church, can get into that, that it's not so-and-so, therefore it's not scriptural. No, is it Jesus Christ? Yes, then it's scriptural. And, and my desire, yes, I want you to like me, but I am really nothing. I am really nothing. If I were to breathe my last breath, you could easily find somebody who preaches the gospel and place them right up here, and they would continue on where I left off. That's what ought to happen. And the church would say, yes, we're here. You preach. Yes, please miss me. But, <laughs> but to say, I'm just saying, the, the church, we, we need to be careful of placing uh, dearly loved people on such a high pedestal that if they're not there, then it's not the right ministry. Okay? Jesus Christ is the sole ministry of any minister that steps up onto this platform. It's not them. It is Christ Jesus. And Paul was telling the Corinthian church, they've been obviously influenced by Apollos and Peter as well. And they're, he's saying, no, 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 no. You, why are you dividing Christ up? They're not your team captain. They're your fellow player. They're walking with you. They want you to walk fully after Christ Jesus. Sure, imitate my life as I imitate Christ. Do the things that I do right that bring glory to God. Don't do the things that I don't do right. Okay? But all the while, every one of us, you and myself, we should be saying, yes, look at me, Lord willing, I have a great example, but no, it's, it's Him. I want you to look at the cross. I want you to look at Christ Jesus. Not at, at Dan Johnson. So, finishing off there, I just want to repeat to you. Number one, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you've been called to be a saint. Sanctified, set apart for his glory. Okay? Own it. Own it. Rise, rise up, O man or woman of God. Rise up. Understand that he is not just throwing you to the wolves. He's saying, there's the wolves. Here's the weapons. Now go fight. Go do battle. As the spirit that I've given you leads you and instructs you and uh, enables you and gifts you, go do battle. And his last statement is, is, don't let there be division in the church. There's a lot of, you know, there's the hypocrisy. We claim unity, we claim peace, we claim love, we claim fellowship. Claim a lot of things. But if there's division in the church, if there's division in the church. And again, going, you know, I don't I don't want to digress. But we as a body of believers, let us be the believers that say, you know what? Don't care what church, what building your building is called. Do you love Jesus? Yep. Okay, I'm your brother. I'm walking with you. Do you claim Jesus? Yep, I'm your brother. And walk with them. And walk with each other. But the gospel we preach is the goodness of Jesus Christ. That he was sent here by his Father in heaven to die for us. To lay down his life. To go to the cross. 
Go to the grave. He's resurrected. He is alive, as the song earlier was sung. He's alive. And he's returning for his church. He's returning for those that will call upon him for forgiveness and salvation. Amen. Is that in your heart today? Are you in a right standing with God Almighty? Are you in a right standing with Him through Jesus Christ? If you do not, call upon Him. Ask Him into your life. Proclaim Him to be in your life. Go after Him wholeheartedly. It's a lifelong process. You will have peace beyond your understanding because you're going to have trouble still while you go. But Jesus promised that He'd give peace. He said, There's, in this world you'll have trouble, but I give you my peace. Ask Christ in your life. Saints of God, followers of Christ, those of you who have been walking with him for however long, let's be the church that rises up. Let us be the people that bring the fellowship, bring the unity, and bring the joy of the Lord into the relationship within the church, as well as out to the world. But I think we have a, a, a special uh, responsibility that whoever is a fellow believer, that we'd have fellowship with them. They may not look like us. They may not talk like us, but if they claim Jesus, begin to grow that relationship. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for your goodness and mercies. We give you this day as we leave this place to go do the service that you've called us to uh, in our homes, in our workplaces, and in our play places. Uh, Father, that we bring you glory and honor. I thank you for this letter uh, to the Corinthian church. Uh, may it sharpen us, may it encourage us, may it challenge us. Uh, to be your people. For the man or woman that has given their heart to you today, this very moment, I pray, Father, that your hedge of protection around their life, that what they did is real, what they did is true, and that they would be able to, to share that with somebody, and that that somebody would begin to disciple and mentor them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I suppose I should pray for the food.